everybody, we are back again, but this week with something a little bit different. Now, I hope you're taking notice of my new title sequence there, because this week I'm going to take you through how I created it using Adobe After Effects. And as this video is a little bit longer than my usual ones, let's waste no time and get straight into it. Now, our title sequence or animation in After Effects is called a composition. So we're going to go ahead and create a new composition here. Call it whatever you like. And leaving all the default values as they are will give us a nice widescreen 16 by 9 production. A composition is made up of a mixture of images, text, shapes, music, amongst other things. And we're going to start off by simply dragging in a background image. From there we can drag it down into our composition pane to create our first layer. Expanding the layer we see the transform functions, one of which is scale. And we can use the slider to increase or decrease the scale of the image to get exactly what we want. In this case we just want to trim off the green leaves in the corner. So to create the effect of the bulb switching on, I need to split my original logo down into two separate layers. One with the light bulb on its own and one with the light bulb with the light on. I'll do this in Photoshop so I'll quickly run through those steps now. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. And to create the two layers that I do need, the first thing I need to do is select and delete the parts that I don't need. Now as the first layer I want only has the light bulb in it, I can take a quick shortcut by selecting the light bulb itself. I then use the keyboard shortcut of Control, Shift and I to invert the selection and hit the delete key to remove that selection. A quick export to the folder of my choice and that's the first layer done. Now I can hit undo a few times or control Z to take me back to my original logo. And follow the same steps again but this time selecting both the light bulb and the light rays. And this is going to give me the effect of the light bulb pinging on. Again a control shift and I to invert the selection and a delete to remove it. Let's export this quickly to the same folder and that's both my layers done. Now we're done in Photoshop for the time being, so let's move back to After Effects and we'll load these images in. Now I mentioned before you can drag and drop your images in, which we could do again, but this time I'm going to show you a slightly different method. Right click, Import, Files, and then select the files that you want. Now we've got some images in the project window, we can start to build up our composition by dragging the first image of the bulb down into our composition panel. Now you'll notice it's not visible at the moment, so we have to drag it above our background layer as it works from top down. Ah, now it's coming a bit large, so we can expand our layer and adjust the scale a little bit. That's looking better. Next, if you remember, we have the Learn As I Do title underneath the bulb. So let's add this by right-clicking into the composition pane, select New, and then Text and then click anywhere into our visualization panel and start writing out our title. Now let's make this look a little bit more appealing by changing the font. We can move over to the character pane there and I'm gonna go for a Segoa print. I'll increase the size of the text slightly And I can use the slider next to this VA icon to increase or decrease the distance between the letters. So I'm going to use this to bring them in a little bit. Let's move the text into position and that's the next step done. Now we get to the fun part by adding effects. This is done through the effects and presets, animation presets, text, and I've chosen the algorithm effect in the mechanical folder. And to add it is as easy as dragging and dropping it onto the text layer. I'll just quickly run that to show you the effect. I think it looks great, but please do let me know in the comments below your favourite text effect and I'll give it a try. Now you can tweak these preset effects, but I like this one straight out of the box. 
I do want a slight delay on the appearance of the text, so I'll just slide the bar to the right so it begins at around one second in. So the next effect I'm going to add is a little wiggle to the bulb before the light comes on. You can use the search bar in effects and presets to find animations that you hope might exist or no exist but just don't know which folder they're in. Again I'll drag the effect into the desired layer. But when I run it you'll see that the wiggle is applied to the entire duration of the layer, which isn't quite what I want. So I'm actually going to remove the effect from the layer before bringing in a second bulb layer, which I can get to appear straight after the initial one by resizing the appearance bars and lining them up. Holding shift while dragging will snap it to any key points in the composition, which is pretty useful. I can then apply the wiggle effect to this second layer. And now when I run it, you'll see I have the desired effect. I can then insert the bulb with the light into my composition. Place it after the wiggling bulb and we're about there with the first part of this title sequence. If you're finding this video useful so far, please do hit that like button. It really does help my channel. Thanks for that. I'll be coming back to fine tune the positionings and lengths of each layer later when I try and align them with the beats of the music that I've chosen. So the second part of my title is a call to the viewer to subscribe and get the notification bell on. So what better time to just take a quick moment, move down to that bottom right hand corner, click the icon and hit that subscribe button for me. So the subscribe element is simply another text layer added in the same way as before. I'll just modify the font slightly to give it that typewritery look and change the color to subscribe red. Another handy feature is this align panel, which helps me quickly snap the text to the dead center of the background. Now I want it to appear straight after the initial sequence, so let's resize it to there. Now the increasing border around the subscribe text simply starts its life as a shape layer, which we can draw as a rectangle around the text. My border presets are already set up, but you can change the colour and thickness up at the top of the screen there. To make the border, we can add something known as a trim path. Now if I quickly expand the trim path, you can see that as I slide the start percentage, the start point of the border moves around the shape. So you can simply set two key points of the start percentage, starting at 100% and moving to 0% to create that visual effect. The further apart you move the key points, the faster or slower the element will move. And this is what the finished element looks like. The final visual element of this title sequence is the ringing notification bell. I'll quickly add the two images to the project that I've pre-created, one bell with the ring and one without. I'll add them both to the composition and position them on top of each other and directly after each other in the timeline. This gives us the effect of the bell starting to ring at a certain frame. Now, there may be a preset effect that I could have used to get the bell to shake when ringing, but instead I'm going to use the element's rotation property, setting a number of equally spaced key points at opposite rotation values to get that back and forth effect. This sliding bar at the top of the composition pane is pretty useful to zoom in and out of your composition to get more or less detail. As you can see, at this level of detail, we're working with individual frames now rather than seconds.
As I mentioned earlier, I'll alternate the rotation a number of frames apart. Now that they're all set up, you can see the effect that we've achieved. Now the final element that's really going to tie all this together is some music. Now you've got to be a little bit careful with copyright here. You're looking for royalty free music and I found loads on a website called bensounds.com. There's all sorts of genres to choose from depending on what style you want to give your title sequence. Now I've plumped for the dubstep one for my titles. Most music clips are free to download. All they ask is if you're using it online in a YouTube video for example, you reference the Ben Sound website in your description. So music's added to your project in the very same way as all other elements and dragged down to the composition as before. So I chose this music clip because it has some big beats which I can use as points to change frames and some wavy effects to match against my wobbling bulb and ringing notification bell. The first thing we'll try and do is to match the wavy section of the music to the wobbling bell. Hopefully you can hear what I mean about the wavy section. So let's find the start point, which I think is about there, and move the wobbling bulb layer to begin at that point. The section finishes with a big beat, which is where we want the bulb to switch on. So let's resize that layer to that point. Let's test that out. I think that's pretty spot on to be honest. The next step is to find that following big beat, which is where we're going to switch over from the first sequence into the second sequence. Which sounded like it was right about there. Holding shift means you can select more than one layer at a time and resize them all together. I think we've just placed them just after the beat there, so I'll just shift them forward ever so slightly. Perfect. The last key point to match up is the ringing of the bell with the wah 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 sound at the end of the music clip. Which to me starts about there. Perhaps just a little later, actually. That seems much better. Okay, so let's give it one play all the way through just to check that we're happy. Yeah, I'm really pleased with how that matches up. So that is it, we are finally finished creating our title sequence and the only thing left to do is to export it as a video file. This is done through composition and add to encoder queue. The Adobe Media Encoder will pop up with your composition already in the queue. In here you can change the encoder settings which I'm going to leave default for now. There are countless videos on YouTube which go into a lot more detail here if you want to play around with these settings. Finally, you have the option of setting the output path before clicking the green play button to start the export. You'll now have your title sequence as one video file 
which you can use in all your future videos. If you've made it this far, thank you very much for sticking with me. Let's have one last look at that title sequence and we'll see you on the next one.